Today, we're going to continue on uh, speaking on our deliverance and, and, and specifically in prayer. And uh, we're going to be talking about another type of prayer today. And we're going to go deeper in and, and we can see how God just puts everything together. And, and just a, a word that the Lord placed in my heart for you uh, as, as the worship team was singing and talking about the love of God and interceding for others, is that remember that God's love for you is not dependent on you. And so remember that no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter how you feel, God still loves you. It's not a quid pro. It's not like if you do this, God loves you. God loves you, that's it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. God's love for you is still the same. And it will never change. It's as strong as it's ever been, whether you're saved or unsaved. Whether you have a relationship with him or not, his love for you is still the same. So I, I need you to just make sure that you have that in your heart, in your spirit, that God's love for you is deep. And so uh, just kind of keep that in your mind as, as we get ready to get into the word of God um, this afternoon. Remember, we're made up of three parts. Um, hopefully, we're going to get this. What are the three parts? We got some of them, right? Body, soul, and spirit. So let's all say that together. Body, soul, and spirit. We've been, we've been on this every week. And, and so th this lets you know how quick we forget. How quickly we forget these things. And it's very important because why? The enemy wants to take it from your mind so you don't understand these things. And they're, they're very foundational to uh, deliverance, to freedom, and, and, and to everything that God has for you. And we learned that our spirit is made new at the point of salvation. But there's a process that takes time to renew our soul. Now our soul is made up of what? <laughs> Mine. No, mind, remember, uh, the will, and emotions. All right, let's say it together. Mind, will, and emotions. That's what your soul is made up of, mind, will, and emotions. It's important. You have to have these down packed. You got to put them in, in your spirit. You got you to gotta put them in your mind, and, and it's got to continually play because this is foundational. And so if you forget, guess what? You can always go to our Dunamis Life Facebook page. There's a little plug for you. And uh, you can watch it again. So next week, you're going to come in, and you're going to shout it out, right? Amen. Amen. And you're going to shout out the right answers, right? <laughs> Some of you are going to shout out something. It might not be right, but I'm going to shout it out. Today, we're going to continue to learn the, the different types of prayer. Touch your neighbor and say, pray for me. Today... And, and it's cool how God just puts it together. Today we're going to be talking about the prayer of intercession. Everyone say intercession. The prayer of intercession. Now here's what intercession is. The prayer of intercession means this. You are interceding or praying on behalf of someone else. Prayer of intercession is praying on behalf of someone or something else. Why do you do that? Because, for one, this person that you may be praying for may not be able to pray for himself or herself because of sickness. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they're in a coma. Maybe, you know, because of the sickness, they can't pray. Or maybe they're under spiritual attacks, you know, and the enemy is really attacking that person, and they can't pray at that moment. Or they could be an addict at the time. They could be a drug addict. They could be, you know, an uh, uh, alcohol addict. They could be an addict, you know, in other things. And, and, and they just can't pray for themselves. They don't have that relationship with God to pray. So you're interceding for them. Or maybe just plainly the person don't believe in God at all. And, and so that's why you are praying for them. You're interceding for them because they don't believe at all in the Lord. So God has giving you that person on behalf, and you're interceding for that person to come to know Jesus Christ. And there's a bunch of other reasons why you could be interceding for someone. Now, the prayer of intercession also can be a general prayer to intercede on like behalf of a church. Maybe you're just interceding for a whole entire church. Maybe not even, you know, the church you go to. Maybe the Lord's placed on your heart to intercede for this church because maybe they had a fire. 
Or maybe, you know, they went through the hurricane like in Puerto Rico or, you know, or earthquakes like in Mexico. You don't know the church, but guess what? God put it in your heart to intercede. So you're not interceding for any specific person. You're interceding for an entire church. You know, it's just a general intercession for the church. Or maybe you're interceding for the government. Maybe God has placed in your heart to pray for the nation of the United States or maybe for another nation. Maybe, you know, for Mexico, for Russia, for, you know, Afghanistan, whatever country it may be. And you're just interceding. God just placed that burden in your heart to intercede and and you're interceding for another country or another government. Or the intercession can be very precise by praying for a very specific need at that moment. Maybe like for a person who has cancer, you know, and and they have bone cancer in the right leg, you know. So you're interceding for that specific area, that specific bone, that specific cancer, and you begin to intercede. So intercession can be very generic or it can be very specific. It can go right down, you know, to the, you're praying for the molecules, you're praying, you know, for the atoms, you know, that are, are causing the problems, and, and you're getting very specific. So intercession is, is, covers a wide range of things. And we're going to look in the Bible at an example of prayer of intercession that can be found in Ephesians chapter 1. There's a bunch of them, but we only have time to look at one. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 15 through 18 is what it says. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith, and this is Paul talking, in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. Verse 16. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Verse 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now, the Apostle Paul is praying here the prayer of intercession for the church of Ephesus. Everyone say Ephesus. Now, Paul tells us in verse 15 to 16 the reasons why he's interceding for this church. He gives us the reasons. He tells us, this is the reasons why I'm going to intercede for this particular church. Paul tells them, first, I've heard about your faith. Everyone say faith. Now, remember the word heard in the Greek is the word, I'll give give somebody a lunch if they can remember this one, from last week. Remember? I ain't going to help you. Too late. (laughs) Remember? It had to do with. The, the sound of a room, remember that word? Acoustics is the English version of it. It's too late. I gave you the hint. I would have given you a free lunch if you would have known that one. But that was the English word. What was the Greek word? It was like, it sounded very close to it. A coup. A coup. Not like me, a cool person, you know, cool. <laughs> you like that one, huh? <laughs> That's when you look up the name Robert in the Greek, it says cool person. That's what it means in the Greek. Amen. Check it out. Prove me wrong. Prove me. (laughs) See how many actually do it. (laughs) Now, here Paul says, I've heard. Remember the Greek word acoustics. Remember, you got to have the right environment to hear. Remember, the greatest band in a gym will sound horrible because of the acoustics. Echoing, and it'll sound bad, but if you put that band or even an orchestra in, in a great sounding acoustical room, it's going to sound awesome. Your ears are going to love what you hear. Why? Because of the acoustics. It's, it's primed and ready and set for you to hear. And it's important that your acoustics in your life are ready to hear what God is saying. And so God is talking to Paul, and Paul has heard about their faith, the acoustic. It means to hear, and and it actually means to hear God's voice, which prompts him to birth faith within you. If you remember the definition, it's to hear God's voice, which then births faith inside of you. Now, here's the question. Paul heard about the faith of this church. My question to you is, what are people saying about your faith? What are people, are people talking about your faith? 
Are they saying, man, your faith is, man, so unbelievable. I can't. Man, when I know I have a prayer need, I know you have the faith, man. I, I just heard about you. I heard about your prayer. I heard about how you intercede. I hear about you, that you really just get into the throne room of God. What are they hearing about your faith? This is how important faith was. This is how great their faith was, was that Paul heard about it. That means people were talking about it. You know, people are always going to talk about you, but what are they saying? Because you know they're always going to talk, right? Amen? Whether good or bad, they're going to talk. But get them to talk about your faith. Have a faith that God says, remember, you don't need a lot. Just the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. So it's not the amount of faith. But get them to talk about your faith, that you have such faith in God that when they come to you, you know, for a prayer request or when they come to you, you know, down and out, your faith is so strong, you encourage them. You lift them up. You're like a Barnabas, an encourager. You, they just know that, man, I heard about you, that you're the one to talk to when I'm down and when I'm sad, when I'm lonely, when I'm depressed. You're the one that I've heard about in this church that I need to go and talk to because I know when I leave from you, I'm going to leave better off. Because how many people leave from you worse off than they came? Amen. <laughs> they came to you and they're like, man, good Lord Jesus. I thought I had problems. Instead of you encouraging them, you told them all your problems. And now they're worse off. They're like, man, the acoustics. The church was being talked about because it was a church of faith. Dunamis Life Church needs to be talked about in this neighborhood as a church of faith. People need to hear about Dunamis Life Church. Man, I heard about that church. I, man, I heard that somebody went in there in a wheelchair and they came out walking. I heard somebody went in there deaf and now they're hearing. I heard somebody went in there blind and now they can see. Man, that faith, something is happening there. What are they hearing about Dunamis Life Church in the Pilsen community? But the only way they can hear is if we have people of faith that come inside and worship so that they can hear, man, there is something going on in that place over there. Man, I'm hearing about it. I'm hearing people who don't even go to that church talk about, man, if you're sick, that's the church to go to. That's the church we need to be known as. Man, if you're sick. I don't know what they do over there. I don't know if they jump around. I've never been there, but I heard that people have gone sick in there, and they came out well. That's all I've heard. You go find out for yourself. Imagine that. Dunamis Life, imagine that. If we became that church. That's the church God wants us to become. That's what Dunamis is, power. That's what we've been called to do, to be the life-changing source of this community. But we can't be that if they don't hear. And they're only going to hear when we activate our faith. See, the church of Ephesus, the community heard about them. They were talking about them. Because Paul even heard about it. He, say, he says, I heard about your faith, a coup. Paul also tells us, that the church was known for his love for all God's people. He says, I heard about your faith, and I heard about your love. See how I was telling you, and like I said, you know, the worship team died. She doesn't even know my verses. But look what we were talking about this morning in worship, love. Loving others. Look how it all comes together. You see, when the Spirit of God is in control... When the Spirit is moving and you're hearing what the Spirit is saying, it brings things together. So here Paul says, I've heard about your faith, but I also know that you're known to love all of God's people. Now the Greek word for love here is the word agape, which is the highest form of love. It's that divine love. The love that means I love you, what God has love for us, no matter what we've done. He doesn't love us because. He just says, I love you. That's it. And there's a period there. It is not, I love you because you do this for me. Or I love you because you make me chocolate cake. I love you because you wash my clothes. I love you because you're a great mom. I love you because you're a great dad. No. God just says agape. I love. 
you. Period. It ends right there. Not because of anything. I just love you. That's the agape. So this is the word Paul saying that this church has for all people. What did this church have a divine love for? The Bible tells us God's people, all of his people. And we're all God's people, whether we're saved or not. We still belong to God. Doesn't mean we're going to go to heaven. We got to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ to get to heaven, right? But even if we don't receive Jesus Christ, we're still God's people. He created us all. So he loves every one of us. And this church was known for loving everyone. Now, follow this. Now, the word all is the Greek word. If you remember that last week, was the Greek word all, was that Greek word pas. Everyone say pas. Remember the meaning of that Greek word pas? It meant each part that applies to the whole. Remember that? Emphasis on one piece at a time or viewing the whole in terms of the individual parts. You remember that? That you look at the whole picture, but then you look at, remember when I talked about the miracle? You guys remember that, amen? You guys were here last week, amen? <laughs> remember the sermon that was preached, amen? <laughs> remember we even had a sermon, amen? <laughs> remember not to just praise God for your miracle, but what led up to that miracle, Every little part that led up to the miracle is pas. You're praising God because of the miracle, but you're also praising God because of every little piece that led up to that miracle. Now, here, Paul's saying that they love agape, all, pas, meaning every people, meaning brown, white, black, yellow, orange, polka dot, whatever. Doesn't matter who you are, but people make up a whole, and he says, And an individual, every little part that makes up the whole people, they love. How many of you know that there are certain people that says only love certain kind of people? How many of you know we're like that? Even though sometimes we don't like to admit it. Why? Because we like people who like us back for one, right? You don't like me back, guess what? I don't love you. You're like, you're lost, right? We say that. You're lost. Or I only like people that like what I like. You know, if you're into music, oh, I find other people who love music. We click right away. Or I only love people who, you know, who uh, get along with me or who, you know, just make me smile or whatever the case may be. We have certain things that we just love about people and, and, and we have relationship with people. And, and that's fine for friendship and, and, and close friends and so on and so forth. But... When it comes to love on behalf of the church and, and a, as an ambassador of Christ, we have to love everyone. Even the ones you don't like, guess what? You got to love them. <laughs> Man, that one, was, that one went down like a rat sandwich in this Baptist church, right? <laughs> you got to love the people you don't even like. Imagine, like, in the church, there might be people who you don't even like inside this building right now. Some of you are looking around right now, like, (laughs) but guess what? You don't got to like them. You just got to love them. We got to be known for love. How can we love, like the Bible says, how can you love God that you can't see when you can't even love the people around you that you can see? When you come to a church, It has to be known as a place of love where everybody feels welcome. Everybody feels loved. Whether I like how you talk to me, whether I like how you dress, how you act, guess what? I got to look beyond all that and get to that inner self and love you the way God sees you. Because guess what? When you don't love somebody, you're seeing them with your physical eyes. You're just seeing what you don't like about them, how they don't fall good with you, you know, no me cae bien, you know, that saying, they just don't, I, I, there's just something about them, I don't like them, I don't want to be around them, I don't want to talk to them, guess what, that's anti-God, imagine if God said that about us, you know what, there's something about you, no me cae bien, 
I don't like you. I don't like the way you look, man. Matter of fact, I don't, I don't like your nose. I don't like how you talk to me. I don't like how you treat me only and call me only when you want to, only when you have a need. Guess what? I'm God. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of you only praying when you have a need, but every, every time everything's going great, guess what? You don't even go to church. Guess what? I don't forget you. Imagine if God treated us like we treat other people. See, God says we got to love people. We got to look beyond with our physical eyes, and we got to see them with God's eyes. You see, when you begin to start seeing people with God's eyes, you begin to see what God loves about them. And guess what? All of a sudden, this person you don't like, you're going to love. Why? Because now you're seeing them through the eyes of God. Because God loves everybody. No matter how horrible they are, God loves them. He, he finds something. Why? Because he created them. There's something inside of them that he loves. And it's, guess what? It's our job to find it. If we want to be known for a church that loves. We just want to be a social club and come and sing some good songs and, and have a good time. And, and then we can be a social club. Amen? But if we want to be called a church. And if we want to be called the people of God. We got to follow what the Bible says. We got to love all people. Agape pas. Love all. Every individual one. Not just the ones we like. The church didn't just love the lovable people. This church of Ephesus didn't just love nice people, relatable people. They had a love for every person, even if they didn't like them, even if they didn't have common interests, even if they weren't of the same race or even of the same belief. You know, I only love people, you know, who are Christian. Where do you get that from? That's not biblical. Doesn't mean we believe what they believe, but we love them. Muslims, you got to love them. Gay, straight, you got to love them. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Man, we're <laughs> a little tough here today. I know love is tough. This, this is, this is the, what the Bible is saying, not me. So if we want to call ourselves Christ-like, we want to call ourselves Christian, we got to love what God loves. we got to act like the way God acts. And when we do, guess what? We get talked about, just like this church of Ephesus. They were a loving church. They loved everybody. They had no conditions. Are we known as a church? Are we known as Dunamis Life Church, people that love all people no matter what, no conditions? I love you even if you don't come to my church. Do we really love this community of Pilsen? Or do we just come here because it's where the church is at? I mean, do you really love Pilsen, the people that live here? Do you really have a burden, a passion, a love that you begin to intercede for them daily? Because God placed us here for a reason. We didn't just come here and just, you know, close my eyes and just say, okay, okay, this is where we're going to open the church, right here. God called us specifically to this community because he wanted a representation of what God's true love is. And are we as Dunamis Life Church being that? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. Am I really interceding for these people in this community or do I just come to this church, do my thing, and go home? Love, agape, pas, all. Amen? We need to think about this. This is what God is calling us out to. This is why we're doing the cafe, because we want to get out there. This is why we're doing the back to, the, I mean, the, the, the dynamite block party. Because we want to truly love these people, but, you know, you, we, we're all busy, right? We all can have a reason why we can't be there. But... For the things that we love, guess what? We make time for. Amen. Guess what? If, if you have a child, a daughter, and they're having a baby, guess what? At that moment they're having a baby, guess what? You'll cancel everything to be there, right? If they say, hey, I want you there, mom, guess what? No matter what else is going on, you're going to be there. Why? Because you love her. Doesn't matter what. You don't have to have, you know, an eight-week notice. 
You, all you need is that one phone call. Guess what? You're dropping everything and you're heading out. Why? Because of love. You do whatever it takes for those you love. Now, do we love this community? Are we going to do whatever it takes? Now, you know, don't take it extreme saying, oh, Pastor Rob says don't take a vacation and all that, and you got to be here. To... Don't take it that far. Don't let the enemy, you know, draw your mind to other conclusions that I'm not saying. But what I'm saying is, if you love, you're going to make every effort to love these people. You're going to say, those people are my people. If they're suffering, guess what? I'm suffering. I love them. Even though they're not coming here right now, I still love them. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. My passion and my love for them is going to drive me out there to meet their need. Agape pas. The prayer of intercession. Paul tells this Ephesian church now in verse 16 that he's praying the prayer of intercession for them. And in verse 17, he tells us what Paul's interceding for the Ephesian church. He tells us what now he, specifically he's interceding for them. The first thing he's interceding them, we find in verse 17, is the spirit of wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. And this is what King Solomon asked for God. And because he asked for wisdom, guess what? God says, because you asked for that, I'm going to give you everything else. I'll give you money. I'm going to give you fame. I'm going to give you land. You're going to be the richest king ever because you asked for wisdom. And this is what Paul is interceding for this church now, for the spirit of wisdom. So we need to intercede for God's people to receive the spirit of wisdom. That's one of the things you need to intercede for. I need to intercede for my brothers and sisters here in the church and in my community for the spirit of wisdom. Paul also asked to give the church of Ephesus the spirit of revelation. Everyone say revelation. Now, the Greek word for revelation is the word apocalypsis, which means to unveil or to uncover. I mean, it was always there, but now it's just unveiled. It's like a curtain. You know, if there was a curtain right here, and you couldn't see this podium, doesn't mean this podium didn't exist. It was always there. But once the curtain was um, open, now it's unveiled to you, apocalypse is, now you can see it. And this is what happens to the revelations of God. There's nothing new. They were always there. It's just now they're being revealed to you as they're opening it up to you. See, the spirit of revelation will unveil deeper insights and understanding of Christ for you. This is why the Ephesians church was so powerful, so great, because they had great manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially the revelatory gifts. If you read about the Ephesians church, this church was so powerful in the revelatory gifts, which is like prophecy, wisdom, discernment. They saw unbelievable miracles and signs and wonders in that church. It was, it was just galore. It was so much prophecy in there. Paul had to write and say, you know what, we need to cut this down to only two to three prophecies of service. If you guys remember the scriptures, amen. <laughs> if not, go look it up. This is, how, this is how much revelatory gifts was in the church, so much prophetic word was in the church. Paul had a right to them. That's where we, that's where we get these rules of, you know, uh, in the prophetic, only two to three in a service. Now we're lucky to get one, right? Amen. Because we're not flowing like them. Why? Because we're not loving people the way they love them. See, when you begin to love people, God begins to pour out the prophetic. And because it was so powerful, people were being healed, people were being delivered, things were happening, all these things were going on. Paul had to write some rules for this church because it was just flowing in such a powerful way. He had to say, you know what, we got to bring some order to this. And, and you can read that later. See, we want to be a church that flows in the spirit of revelation. Every one of you God has called to prophesy. I heard a strong amen on that one. <laughs> Every one of you, God has called you to prophesy. Amen. See, what you love, you agree with. See, God, this church is called dunamis, which means power. But are we truly experiencing the power of God? Are we truly experiencing the signs and wonders? Are we at a point where, you know, the apostle would have to come in here and say, hey, we need to put some order because there's just so many healings going on. We're going to have to put this is the time only for healing. This is the time for this. And this is the... 
Why? Because it's so flowing in this place. The spirit of revelation. This is what Paul was interceding for this church. Even though it was already flowing, he says, we want more. We're just going to get some order in this, and we're going to pray that God even opens it up more, unveils to you even more. See, Paul is also interceding for the Ephesian church to have their eyes or their heart enlightened. You can read that right there in, in verse 18. Now check this out. Let's get ready to close this up. The Greek word for eyes in this verse is talking about the mind's eye. Remember, your mind was, is part of your what? Your soul. Everyone say soul. Remember, we just said that in, in, in just about 10 minutes ago. Amen. We got to remember these things. The mind is part of your soul. And the reason we know that he's talking about the mind's eye, which is the soul's eye, and not your physical eyes, is in the next words. Paul says that their eyes of their heart. And the Greek word for heart is cardis, which always refers to your mind, your character, your inner self, your will, or your soul. It never refers in the Bible when it talks about heart. It never refers to the physical heart. It always refers to the soul, the will, you know, that. So he says, the eyes of your heart be enlightened. So check this out. This is powerful. Our soul or our mind needs to be renewed so that we can see clearly. Because we have eyes in our soul. We need to understand what God wants to show us and to teach us. Now follow this. Paul wants our soul, our mind, to understand that we have a guarantee here to inherit his glorious riches. I asked the worship team, come on up. We're closing this off. Now the Greek word for riches, remember, we, we talked about this in a lot of different um, sermons. It was the Greek word plutos, remember? Which we get the English word what? Who can remember that one? Plutocrat. Plutocrat. Now, how many remember what, Pluto, what a plutocrat is? <laughs> nope. Uh, a plutocrat, you know, and it's not, it's not a Disney character either. That's Pluto, the dog, <laughs> in case some of you guys are thinking that one too. A plutocrat is... A person who is so rich that you can't count his money because the time you finish counting his money is already grown because of interest and investments. That's what a plutocrat is. He's such a rich person that you cannot count his money. It's ever growing. You can never get the true amount of how rich he is. So the Greek word that is used here that Paul says we have a guarantee to inherit his glorious riches, his glorious plutos. It's talking about God. Now check this out. The riches of God are our inheritance. Paul is telling us, and we can only understand this fully, when we allow our soul, our mind to be renewed with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. See how it's important as he intercedes for spirit and uh, wisdom and revelation? We can only understand that next phrase, the glorious inheritance of his riches, we can only understand that when we have a spirit of wisdom and revelation released upon us. Now, check this out. The Greek word for inheritance means this. The gift of God to his chosen people, which in the Old Testament was the promised land. Check this out now. This, this is great. The inheritance means the gift of God to his chosen people. And in the Old Testament, that was the promised land. But in the New Testament, our promised land, remember the promised land, the land that was flowing with milk and honey and riches beyond galore? Our promised land in the New Testament, our inheritance is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. See, the Old Testament saints were promised a physical land. But we, the New Testament saints, our promise is a Savior in Jesus Christ that has everything, the physical promised land had, and way more. His glorious riches, Plutos. See, they were in a land, the Old Testament saints. Remember when Joshua went into the promised land? They said, this land is flowing with milk and honey. That was the inheritance for them. But for us, our inheritance 
is the glorious riches of Jesus Christ, which are never ending. But in order to understand that, our eyes have to be able to see, see it. See, we don't see it with our physical eyes. We see it with our soul eyes. We even sing a song. Back in the day, it's called, Open the Eyes of what? Of my heart. We sang it, but we probably didn't truly understand what it really meant. We were praying God to open up the eyes of our soul so that we could see. What are we looking for? It's like, I tell you, hey, go here, but I don't tell you where. Well, where is here? I don't see it. Where am I going? What are your eyes looking for? What are your soul eyes looking for? The glorious riches of the Lord, his revelation, his wisdom. Why? So that you can love people. Why? So that when they come here, they can experience the power of God. So they can see miracles, signs, and wonders. They can come in here sick as an unbeliever. And they, all they can know, they said, you know what? I don't know about this God thing, but I know I was sick. And when I left this place, I was healed. So whatever that is, I know it's true. I know it's real. But guess what? If we don't love them, they're never going to come. If we don't allow the spirit to flow, they're never going to experience the miracles of God. It's up to us. And how does it all start? By the prayer of intercession. Interceding for people maybe you don't even like. Maybe you don't even know. We need to start interceding for these people around us. I know we have people who are interceders. They're, they're, they're people of intercession. They just love to pray, and, and that's great. We need those. But we also need you to just intercede. You might not have the gift of intercession, but you can begin to intercede for our community. Maybe what you can do is go on a Google map and get names of streets here and just begin to pray general prayers first. I pray for everybody who lives on the street of Coulter. I'm going to pray for them. And guess what? Pretty soon, God's going to give you a revelation. Maybe you're going to see a face. And then one day you might walk down that street of culture and see that person that you saw in your prayer. And you say, you know what? I'm going to go speak to them because I've seen them. And guess what? In my mind's eye, the eyes of my heart are open. And guess what? You begin to see things that God sees. See, this is for everybody. This ain't just for one person. This is for every one of you. And then you're going to be coming with great testimonies. Guess what, man? I was praying just generically for people on culture. And then I saw this face. And then we had the cafe. And I saw that person walk by. And I went over there and I spoke to them and I prayed for them. And I led them to Jesus Christ. And guess what? They're coming to church. But that can only happen when you begin the prayer of intercession. You see how it all works together? I pray that you listen to this message again. There was so much more we just didn't have time to, to go into. But I believe this is what God is calling us to, to be a church that loves, church that intercedes. And I pray that you take this challenge. And we're going to close with this. And I'm just going to pray with you, and then we're going to dismiss. That you go on Google if you don't know the names of the streets around here and you find one street and if you have Facebook this is your challenge this is, I'm, I'm challenging this wasn't even in my notes but this is what the Lord is telling me to challenge you with that you go on your Facebook and say I am praying for this particular street put it on there put it on your Facebook I'm praying for culture I'm praying for 25th street I'm praying for Oakley street I'm praying that way we all know what we're praying for, what street. And you begin to pray and intercede for that street generically. And you see how God is going to open up your eyes of your soul. And I guarantee you, if you begin to truly intercede, your eyes will be opened up and you will see. You're going to begin to see things on that street specifically to pray for. You're going to begin to see homes. This is, I'm prophesying over your life right now. You're going to begin to see homes inside of people's homes. You're going to begin to see things that are happening in that home. 
And you're going to begin to intercede for those things. Children. You're going to begin to intercede for children that are suffering in a home. And you're going to see their faces. And before this year is out, you will meet those children. You will meet those people. And you will have an encounter with them. To, and a, a way to share the love of Christ with them. I pray that you take that challenge. I pray that you take that challenge. If you're going to take that challenge, just say amen. Remember how we talked about everything this morning and we talked about the lying? Amen. Don't say amen if you're not going to take the challenge. I want you to take the challenge, but I don't want you to be a liar either. I want you to take this challenge. So if you're going to take this challenge, say amen. All right. I heard a bunch of them. And I got most of you on my Facebook, so I want to see that. I want to see the street name. In this next week, you got this whole week. By next Sunday, I should see I'm praying for this street. This is a challenge. And you're going to see how people are going to start coming into this place because they're going to hear about it. They're going to hear. Even though they don't know the Lord, they're going to hear it. Somehow they're going to be like, man, I, there's something about that place is just drawing me in. Why? Because you're interceding for them. They're hearing their name being called out in the spirit, even though they don't know him. And they're going to be drawn in. And they're going to be coming in. You might even see them come to church and you saw their face already. You're going to be, that's the one I saw. That's the one I saw, man. And you're going to get so excited. I'm prophesying over your life. This is going to happen for those who take it seriously. Challenge it. God says, test me in these things. Test me and see that I won't do it. I pray, close your eyes. Father, right now, I seal this prophetic word over their life, over the streets, God, that we're going to pray for.